Well, it is 7.30, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I see that there is nobody uh, in the live session class, so this might go pretty quick tonight um, if nobody does show up. As we get started, um, I'm guessing um, everybody could probably see the PowerPoint okay, um, and hopefully you guys could hear me okay as well. So. Um, just good evening, everyone, and just welcome to our second live session. For tonight, here is the overview of tonight's agenda. We will have welcome and introductions. Since nobody's here, um, I will start a little bit about saying about myself. Um, and then we will have the live classroom expectations, important reminders. Um, just want to check in with everybody to see how it's going and then d dive into some lesson content. Uh, we will review learning styles and teaching strategies from last week's uh, assignment and then go over some information from this week's reading in chapter eight. And then I will close tonight with um, a time for you to ask any questions you might have, which nobody's here, so um, just feel free to email me if you have any questions or call me or give me a text. Um, just let me know what works and what questions you might have, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so basically, um, you know, introducing myself. Um, so. You guys all know that my name is Mike and I live in Colorado and I'm currently the ed an education supervisor for a Head Start program in Denver Metro. My favorite children's book changes from time to time. My current favorite is Sleepy Squirrel. It's a book from the 80s about a squirrel getting ready for bed who insists she's not sleepy. I just love this book because I read it to my daughter every single night before bed, and she loves it. Um, so I would encourage you guys when you participate for some of the um, questions for the live session module to just state what your book, your favorite book is and why and where you're from um, to get full credit for that. <clears throat> so live session expectations. Um, if you are, a, if you do end up attending the live session, you're expected to engage in some conversation with me um, and anyone who else pertains to the, um, to the course. The purpose of the live session is for open dialogue and questions um, are encouraged and like most of you, you guys can't who cannot attend the live session tonight um it'll be posted the next day and then you must complete the live session quiz to earn credit so any questions that i ask um so for instance like what's your favorite book um or any other questions that i pose I would like you guys to answer the questions and more than just a one word response, I kind of want detail of why um, you think so and so um, for each answer. So, there's some important reminders that I want you guys to know um, as we are getting very co close to the end of the course. The last day of the class is February 6th, which is on next Tuesday. No assignments will be accepted after 11.59 Central Standard Time for any reason. Module 5 discussion responses are due Saturday, February 3rd. Module 5 course projects 
lesson plan part four due Sunday, February 4th. The module five field experience report is also due on Sunday, February 4th. All field experience hours should be completed and documented on this report. You must have at least 30 hours of field experience or you will not pass the class. So make sure that you guys really uh, have all your hours. I think I've checked in with everyone and I think everybody is on track um, to get all their hours met. In module six discussion, um, due date is February 6th, no responses to peers are needed um, for any peers or for the structure or for the instructor. Um, and then the module six field experience report is due February 6th. So if you have any questions about due dates, please let me know um, sooner rather than later so um, we can make sure that we meet our deadlines. So checking in, um, I think most of you, especially from the mid-course uh, mid survey, um, gave some feedback that the class is going is pretty easy. Um, this is what reactions did you guys take away from module four? Um, any thing that was uh, any key takeaways? Um, are you guys reading announcements each week? I think most of you are, if not all of you. And then right now, do you know where your grade is in the class? Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know um, so I could. Uh, Make sure to answer your questions if you have any. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to go over the course project for this week. You will be completing your lesson plan that you have been working on all term. Open your module four comprehensive lesson plan assignment. This should be already include the components from the module two, three, four lesson plan assignments. Please begin by going through the feedback I left you on your previous course project assignments and making corrections and additions where necessary. You can view my feedback on previous assignments by clicking on My Grades tab on the left side menu of the course homepage and then clicking on the assignment. You can view in text notes by scrolling over the highlighted areas. You can see additional notes by clicking on the rubric. Once you have made necessary corrections, you can open the Module 5 Comprehensive Lesson Plan template. Copy and paste the entire Module 5 template on to the bottom of your revised Module 4 Comprehensive Lesson Plan. Complete the Module 5 template and submit the assignment as one document. For additional support on how to use copy and paste to create one lesson plan, you can view the short video available in the instruction for the assignment. If you encounter any problems as you complete this week's assignment, feel free to email me. <clears throat> so last week in chapter six, um, you read a little bit about different learning styles and teaching strategies. Learning styles are how individuals perceive and process information. So there are three sensory channels most frequently used by individuals to take in information, seeing, hearing, and touching. Individuals who learn best by seeing are classified as visual learners. Those who learn best by hearing are classified as auditory learners. And those who learn best by touching and moving are classified as kinesis learners. I, for example, learn best by seeing. I am an observant of visual details and I enjoy writing. My wife, on the other hand, is an auditory learner. 
She learns best by hearing. She has an extended vocabulary and enjoys in conversations and likes to ask lots of questions. Um, so one of the questions that I'm posing for this live session um, that I would like you guys to respond to is how do you learn and what is your reason and what is your reason you think um, you learn visually, auditory, synthetically? Um, let me know how you learn and what strategies do you use to promote children's learning in the classroom? Um, you know, it's really important to make sure to have a variety of these learning styles in the classroom to meet the learning needs of diverse learners for our young kiddos. So moving on to chapter eight case study, um, this is another question. Um, um, I'm probably going to pose that I would like you guys to answer in order to receive full credit um, regarding the case study number two, I believe it is in your book in chapter eight. Um, so chapter eight talks a little bit about, has a lot of good information regarding collaborating with families and communities. From community outreach to parent conferences to collaborating with school districts for transition to kindergarten, parent nights, volunteer, volunteering, um, different family styles, um, bisexual, homosexual, heterosexual, just different dynamics. So there's a lot of information. Um, one of the biggest things in chapter eight is understanding that parents are the child's first teachers and are responsible for what their children know upon entering school. <clears throat> So, you know, it's our responsibility as teachers to be sensitive to the families that do not attend school different school functions um, and who are, you know, kind of opposed to talking with you as teachers. Um, we just really need to be aware of that um, and know it's usually not personal. Um, with this following case study, I'm going to read it uh, from Chapter 8 and um, just give you a little insight about why sometimes it's not personal towards you, but more towards past experiences. So the following story is a true story recalled by Joseph, an American Indian who attended elementary school in the early 1970s. His experiences are certainly not universal and unlikely to happen today. However, his story illustrates the ways in which children's experience stay with them for many years to come and can influence their attitudes into, into adulthood. The teachers and principal of the local elementary school are puzzled and concerned. They have done everything they can think of to entice the parents of their American Indian children to conferences, meetings, and special events. Virtually, no one shows up Joseph, the American Indian father of a kindergarten child, could tell them why and hopes to in the near future. As soon as he can convince his wife that she needs to come too to answer the school's questions, Joseph needs to tell them about his own experience. It was in the early 1970s, the summer before he entered first grade, that the tribal school was torn down and nearly 100 children were transferred to the district's public schools. Joseph was assigned to the school his daughter now attends. On the day school began, he and his friends took their first ride in the school bus to their first ever school experience. Arriving at the school, the older children knew to go straight into the building Joseph and his first grade friends, uncertain about what to do, noticed the nearby playground equipment and ran to it with great glee. Within five minutes, the principal emerged from the building, yelled angrily at them, and led them inside. A couple boys, a couple boys by their ears. Joseph was terrified and overwhelmed. Within a few months, 70 of the 100 children had been placed in special education classes. 
Even at the age of six, Joseph knew that many did not deserve to be placed there. A number of boys fell asleep in class because they had been out fishing the night before with their fathers. The girls, too, shy to speak up in class, chatted about their schoolwork during recess on the playground. Joseph also remembers a disparity in the classroom discipline. Girls could chatter endlessly in the class and never be called out. If two Indian boys began to talk to each other, they would be paddled or sent home. Today, Joseph still feels fortunate that he wasn't sent to special education classes, although he initially was confused by most of what went on. How, for example, could someone look at that big round object on the wall and tell what time it was? What were shapes, letters, and numbers anyway? As he looks back, as he looks back on his first grade experience, Joseph knows that many of those 70 children did not belong in special education, or they wouldn't be now be in the midst of a successful adulthood. He himself holds a graduate degree and is dedicated to helping today's Indian children gain school success. Joseph knows to why parents with decidedly unfound memories of their early schooling don't want to revisit the scene of their unhappiness. He has described the trip from the reservation to the public school as a trip to a foreign country. Although Joseph is aware that the opening scene with the principal wouldn't happen today and that his daughter's school is committed to all of its children, he wonders if he will have the courage to tell the school why the parents are reluctant to come. Perhaps his wife can help. <clears throat> it's often times that parents whose memories of school are not positive, who do not appear for conference, conferences or other events despite the school's best efforts. Other parents are too tired, too shy, too intimidated or insecure in their knowledge of English. On occasion, it might Maybe that the parents truly do not care about their child's education, but I, I could tell you that is pretty rare. It's Joseph's suggestion that caregivers and teachers reach out to children's parents and family members. Once parents have confidence in their relationship with the teacher, they may feel encouraged to visit their children's school. Because of the negative experience that Joseph encountered by teachers when he was younger, he is reluctant to attend these collaborative events as an adult. Uh, that's why it's so important for us as teachers to understand the effects they have on children in the early years of life. Most people have a difficult time forgetting the negative experiences instead of the positive ones when they are younger. It sets the stage for adulthood and brings out different perceptions about schools, teachers, and et cetera. They understand and they know how bad it feels to have something negative happen to them, and it is difficult to forget negative experiences throughout their life. That is why getting to know each family's dynamics without bias helps teachers understand not only the child better, but the family as a whole. I challenge you guys to get to know each one of your parents' names something unique about them and sit down and have a meaningful conversation with them. If you take the time to invest in your families, my guess is that you will build a positive relationship that will help collaborate families, teachers, and communicate, which in turn will help each have more positive experiences at school and have better outcomes at achieving goals. So for the chapter eight case study, what I would like you guys to answer is, what are your thoughts in regards to the case study? And how does your program connect with families and communities? Another additional question I would like to ask is, how do you guys, how do you guys collaborate with parents who are unfriendly or are, kind of standoffish. I know it's really hard 
to invest in those people who don't want to be invested in. But, you know, it's our job is to share as much information as we can with them so we could have the best outcomes for our children. So it's a pretty short live session since nobody's here. Um, I just, you know, that pretty much wraps that wraps it up for tonight. Um, if you have any questions about what is presented in the session course assignments or whatever else, please let me know. Um, I'll be getting, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, make sure to answer these questions fully for the live session in order to receive full credit. Uh, it was a joy having you guys in class. And I wish you all well in the future. Have a good night.